Creo Parametric 4.0, Lesson 12, Part 2. We will continue with using our assembly format, and we will create a drawing. So I'm going to click New, and it's going to be a drawing, and it's the assembly drawing. I'm just going to give it a generic name right here. I'm going to uncheck the default template. Click OK. And I'm going to select the subassembly, not the assembly. That was in session. That's why it came up. Empty with format. I'm going to browse here for my format. And this is the same one which actually was listed there. But I'm going to go to my directory and locate the one that we create. Click OK. And we get our format and our <clears throat> table has been filled in so I'm going to click on the table tab in the ribbon and I'm going to select this and I'm going to move it and if I really want to get that picky I could just take it and I could try to put it in the corner here so that it lines up close almost all right now one thing if we want to take a look at this right away I can put my cursor anywhere along the top and if I go up a little bit, it highlights the whole column. So for instance, this is a little tight in here. I could actually change this to 1.1, let's say. And let's see if that helps. Helps a little bit. And you can see over here, I could go and double click here and make this one a little bit smaller. Let's go with 0.7. Now let's go with 0.6. Okay, and it's close enough. And again, if I want to get really fancy or picky with it, I can move it over until both lines become red, means over the top. And I could also adjust it so it's even on the other side. Regardless, I've got my components. You can see the items are here. You can see the part number, the description. You can see the material. Obviously, the subassembly doesn't have a material. And it shows you that the quantity is here. If I wouldn't have picked no duplicates, it would have shown two entries for the clamp ball. So zoom all. I'm going to turn off my model tree. And I'm going to click my layout tab, right mouse button, and general view, and select a position for it. Now, I know eventually this is going to end up being the top view. So I'm going to click up here. And I'm going to click on front. And then people say, wait, that's the front view. Well, that's just the view that was there when you were modeling. It has nothing to do with the drawing. So there's my view. If I wanted to change my scale, I could change my scale at this point. Uh, how about 1.5? See what happens. Apply. That's pretty good. Um, the view display, if I wanted to go into that, I normally don't want any hidden lines. And I want these to be dimmed here for the tangency. Apply. OK. Now, I'm going to highlight that view or select the view, and I'm going to put a projection view in for the front, like so. And I really don't need a side view, so I'm just used to use two views. Now, this scale item, if I wanted to, I could click on that and just delete it. Now, the one thing that's showing up is all my datum tags. And I shut off my model tree, and I shouldn't have done that. So with the model tree, and you can see all these columns are still in here. I'm going to collapse it. So I'm going to go into my layers and click on layers, and I'm going to hide. And since mainly datum features are on that, they're the ones that are going to go away. So now I'll shut my model tree. I'll refit. I'll make sure these are all turned off because you don't need these are these are uh, items that you use when you're modeling, not in a drawing. It gets people confused. They leave on the axis. Don't leave on the axes. All right. So the next thing we want to do is we could, at this point, we could go to our annotate, show, and click on our datums. I wish it was called something else. And select here and here. And nothing comes up. So I'm going to go and individually select. Let's say I want this to have a center line. And let's say this here. 
So I can go through here and select the ones I want to have. Now in the front here, be a little careful. I don't really want them here. I'm going to turn this into a section. But I'm going to select over here because I know later I'm going to want that. I'm going to want this to go down the middle. Now, I can double click on this front view and select sections. And we created a section when we were in the model. I'm going to apply it. OK. And I'm going to go and select on or double click on my section. I'm going to go to my layout tab first, otherwise it won't work. And it'll highlight one item at a time. I'm going to do this as filled because a solid round that you cut and it's a standard part. It's allowed to have a fill in it as long as it's not too big. That's the standard. Next, and I want to scale this one till I can see it. And the next one will be the swivel. And again, in this case here, I'm going to change the uh, angle. That looks pretty good. And the last component, again, I want to scale it. And half. So you can see they're going in opposite directions now or at an, an, an angle that's not the same. You want to do that. That's the way the standard says to do it. Done. Middle mouse button. Section AA, I mean, there's only one section. We could actually get rid of that if we don't really want it. The other thing is, if we want to double click on the front here, go to sections. This has a very large dialog, arrow display. Another way to get arrow display is to simply select the view, say, add arrows, and then click where you want it to go. And the arrows will go up on the top here. Now, this is the drawing. And one thing I want to do, well, let's do this first. Let's go over to our table and create balloon, balloons and create all the balloons. So it's going to automatically put this in there for us. So what I want to do is I want to move some to the front. So I want to move them down to the front view. And I'm going to hit F11 to make this even larger. And I'm going to go in and I'm going to select one. It's your choice what you want to do here. I'm going to do one. I'm sorry, three and five. And I could even move number one down there also. So right mouse button, move to view, and click here. Now, this one is not too bad, but right mouse button, I have to select one at a time. All three were selected, so it wouldn't give me what I wanted. Select one at a time, and it'll allow edit. And let's say I want to move this to another position. Once it's off there, I can slide it. Well, usually I can. But it's where I want it to be anyway. So over here and over here. We have to decide which ones we want to move. Maybe these weren't the proper ones for bringing them into the front view. So that looks like it's going to number three. And if we look over here, number three is the ball. So I made a mistake. I really would like to move that back up here. So there's my ball. I'm going to move it over here. And then right mouse button, edit attachment, and I'm going to click right in here somewhere. So the other one is number five. So number five was the double-ended stud, the long stud. And again, I picked the wrong one to move. So I want to go back over to that one. And I am going to hit my F11 and make sure I've got the proper thing selected. It says all down here. So uh, that's because I didn't hit my middle mouse button. 
Sometimes the little menu manager will come up underneath over here. So why we'll a lot of people keep on the old sizing, which is like 80% of the screen when you're working with a PTC product. So I want to select this one. I want to move it back up to the other view, like so. And it's really not in a great po position. So I will move it and then change its attachment to someplace a little cleaner. All right. Now, number two and four. Let's see what they are. Number one should be the swivel. So two is the swivel and four is the foot. And those are the ones I should have in the very beginning. I should have paid attention to what I was doing. No big, big deal. Let's select the two balloons. Let's bring those down to the front. And again, with the attachment, however I want to put it in there. Now, see this here, this menu manager? It, it's what some people kind of forget that's way over there in that side there. So looks like four is OK. So we've got all of them in there, or five balloons. Now, you'll notice that this is all nice and dark and, and filled. We want to do that also with the parameters, the drawing parameters for the whole thing. So I'm going to go over and click on Prepare Drawing Properties and Change and Open. And I'm going to select um, Drawing Options, Apply, Close, and let's see if it does any better. Yeah, OK. So it's so all dark now. It's, the arrows are filled. Text is filled. And yeah, you can go, according to the book, you're supposed to go and make some of these changes because you want to make maybe these a little bit bigger and then you want to make your balloon arrows a little bit bigger to go along with the size of uh, the drawing. Okay, so we have all those on there. If we want to change things, we can always click on here and you can change your text style. Uh, you can edit the attachment. Um, let's see this. We click on here and put our cursor here. What comes up? Well, nothing. I thought something might come up for us, but it doesn't. So again, if you double click on here, you can see what you get. You can change your, t your properties, which is check text style. And you can also see up in the top here some of the things. You can change filled, text height. So in your ribbon now, you have opportunities to do make to make alterations, including this is what I was looking for, first of all, which is the arrow style. Let's say I wanted to make a filled dot. And as far as my attachment, let's say I wanted to go right, uh, same reference. Nope, didn't do it. I was hoping I could change that, edit attachment, change reference. Uh -huh. No, it won't let me do it. Hmm. I was hoping it would allow me to pick in the middle, but for some reason it's not. So you can change your arrows depending on what you want, the style. This is pretty much the drawing, the assembly, or I should say the sub-assembly drawing is complete at this point. All right. So I can save this, of course, and then I want to go and start a new drawing. So I'm just going to close it, and I'm going to start a new drawing. Make sure you pick Drawing, and again, I'm just giving it a generic name for myself. Click OK, and I want to make sure the clamp assembly is what I'm going to do here. Empty with format. It is going to be the E that I created before. OK, and it's going to automatically give me my information and reading it in from each one of the components, the parameters. So let's go over to the table and window this in and then just move it away. Get it away from it. We can always move it back later. 
Now, let's go to Repeat Region and select Attributes and no duplicates, recursive, and let's go, let's go flat. All right, done. Now, what that did is it just gave me the components in the assembly, not the sub-assembly, just the assembly. So let's put in a view, layout, and general view. OK. It's going to be the front again. All right. Move it to where I want it to go. We're going to project a new view. So I'm going to remember to go over to our layers and turn everything off by hiding it. That should do it. I'm still getting interesting. I'm still getting the the uh, datum tags for my plate. Now, what I could do is I could come over here and on the plate take a look at what is there. And I see a ABC. I could highlight those and right mouse button. I could hide and model. So they're gone now. All right. So as far as our view goes, this time I can click down here and I can, uh, that's 1.5. Rather than the scaling the view, I scale the drawing here. And put them up like I want them. Um, I'm going to go and double click here in this view. And the display, I want this to be no hidden. And I want it to be dimmed as far as the tangencies. And apply. And on that one, I think that's probably OK. Like so. Now in the front, I'm going to double click on it. I'm going to go into sections and display a section. Uh -huh. OK, I have a section here. I didn't think it was going to come up with one. I must have a section on this model that I used. You're not going to have that. You're going to add a section. And create new. And I want to show some datum planes. And done. And we'll call this one AX, just to have a new name on there. Check, and I want to select a datum plane or a plane, and I don't have any of mine showing, which is a problem, and I can't display one, so therefore I do have to go back over to my model tree, and let's go and take a look at this. want to unhide them. I'm not getting a very good choice here, which for some reason. Hmm. That's kind of funny. I'm not able to unhide them, I thought. There. Let's try that. So I want to go and select on my datum plane. And hopefully pick up a datum plane here. Not doing too good with that. Let's try this. We do have datum planes in the model itself. And let's say I wanted to take the datum plane down the middle here, which should be, let's say, the top datum plane. OK. And I've created a new, let's see if I can get rid of all this now, section. I should have created a new section. Uh, 
coordinates there, apply, and there's my section. So I created one in the drawing. And the reason why I had to show you that is because I already had one created and I had saved it like that. I'm going to track that one there, and I'm going to use this one right here instead. So it's section A. And turn off all my datum features again. Get rid of my section down here. And as usual, we want to make sure we go and put all of our annotations in there appropriately. There's no dimensions, so we're going to still go to our center lines. And here, it depends on what you want to show. If I select here, I'm holding the control key down. If I wanted to show all my center lines, I could do that. you got to find out which one it likes. Sometimes it doesn't like the ones you think it should be showing. Now I'm having trouble finding that one. It's kind of funny. There it is. I'll take that. I'm trying to find the hole. And in the front here, we usually don't show anything down a section. But in this here, we are going to click on that and see if we can get the center line to go down the middle of that one, too. Apply. Yeah, there we go. Apply. Okay. So you have your center lines. Um, we might as well clean up the front view. The top view here, you can you can expand these center lines out. There's lots of stuff you can do. I don't really need this one. I can just expand this one out. And the same thing in the other direction. So you can edit those as you need. Over here in the front view, we are going to change a section. So I'm going to go back to my layout tab and double click on my sectioning and I'm back with that old old component and this is the menu manager and I'm working on the components individually and here is a the nut that's cut and I'm gonna fill that it's kind of a standard you're allowed to do it sometimes and here if, if I don't want this hatching what if we exclude and then next and we fill that one, and then next. And this one, we're going to change the, well, I wanted to change the scale. It's not allowing me to do that. That's kind of spacing. Let's try spacing. OK. So here it said spacing, not scale. I thought that was interesting. And we'll go to the next one. Um, this one's not so bad. I'll just leave it. The next, and if we wanted to change the spacing again take it in the half and done and I go back over to the annotate I want to grab that uh, center line bring it all the way through so the standard old standard says you don't have to section a solid round if it's a standard part and if it's 90 degrees to it you can make it a fill and here we made this one a fill also so we're setting up our views to be correct and then we want to go in we want to go back to our table tab and we want to click on uh, create balloons create all and then we just simply move the ones we want to the to the front view so in this particular case, I think only two of them, maybe three, can go to the front view. And if you look over here, you'll see you only have the three components. Number four is the subassembly. So number four is this kind of an odd choice for the subassembly. So in this one here, I would probably just pick this as my position. The little mouse button shuts that off, by the way. Like so. Uh, this is to the stud, I guess. Uh, and let's move it up to here. Okay. So you can see you just move these around. And this one here, that's a bad look so let's go and pick an edge on that like so. so you move them around and then again you do have to remember that some things may not be reading in the 
parameters that you want, or the properties, I should call it. And we're going to go to Drawing Properties. Change. And then again, we're going to open up the appropriate one. And we'll see that it filled in the arrows and filled in the text. So you, of course, want to take your table and move it appropriately. And we're going to then start a new sheet. Now, you can come down here and click New Sheet. On the Layout tab, New Sheet. Right mouse button, don't see new sheet, but we'll do the one on the bottom here, plus. And you'll tell right away that the original propagation of the bill of materials is there. I'm just going to move that a little bit up. I'm not going to get worried about its position. And in this case here, let's put a new view in, general view. And we're going to use a combination, OK, and click here. It's coming. It's kind of funny. And the reason why it was created when it was in isometric, so I'm going to go and select isometric. That looks pretty good as far as the display. We don't want to have uh, any hidden. And uh, let's try no tangencies. Uh, it doesn't look so good. Let's go dimmed. Apply. OK. Now we could go over to Annotate tab and Model. And let's just click on a few things. And we'll see now we got the axes going down the middle. And let's say this one here. I'm holding down my Control key. Is that one giving it to me or not? Well, let's just make sure this one is on. It's kind of funny. It's not showing it. So, let's see. Oh, there it is. For some reason, it took that solid round. And I don't know about this one here. Kind of a funny, oh, took that one. All right, well, I'll take him where I can. And of course, you can just simply extend them through if that's what you want to do. And finish it off. Now, the view itself, if you go over here, there's things that you can't do. Um, we could do a section, but it would be pretty ugly and not really necessary. But there's some things that you can't do. So even if you went shading and apply, it'll shade it. But if you wanted to do the combined state where it shows some of them are hidden, some of them are not hidden, some are shaded, some have edges. You can't do that. So we're going to go to No Hidden again, Apply. Or we can leave this one on. Let's leave this on. So we have a different type view. And if we wanted to balloon this one, of course, we would still go over to our table and create balloons, create balloons all. And this time, it didn't show up all, all, all the balloons because it had already done it on another sheet. So here I clicked on Create Balloons. And you can say all. If it doesn't work, click on this and then select inside of your table. It'll then propagate it. And then you can go through here, and you can change all the positions of everything. I'm going to go to Layout. I'm going to click on this one. Edit Attachment. I'm just going to go over here and see. No, it won't let me do it. I was hoping it would uh, let me position it differently. No, it won't. No. Okay. 
In that particular case, though, you could t turn this one into a, the arrowhead into a uh, dot, and it would be in the middle of the component. I didn't bother to change it to the, the edge. So I'm going to zoom all. And you can have move or copy sheets. There's a lots of things you can do here to move them around. You can import drawing data. And you could import the drawing that we just did. Um, Subassembly drawing. Open. And now we have three sheets. We have our subassembly drawing. We have our exploded view. And we have our sheet showing the assembly model with three components and the subassembly. That's the end of lesson 12.